A lot of the power of the java.io package comes from the ability to use something called the decorator pa uh, pattern. This is a design pattern that allows you to add new functionality to an object by wrapping it inside of other objects that have new capabilities, what we call decorating the object. And it just so happens that if you look in the API, we saw there are a whole bunch of things that are input streams. So we have all of these direct subtypes of input stream. We also have a bunch of direct subtypes of, of output streams. And some of these have several subtypes underneath them. We played with the file input stream and we could easily make a file output stream previously. Now we wanna talk about some of the other options. So one of the most useful forms of decoration is buffering. And this is significant for both whether you're doing things through files or networking or whatever, because a lot of input and output is, in some sense, slow. Now, when we talk about the speed of how fast you can get data from something, there are really two numbers that matter. There's a latency and there's a bandwidth. Now, most of the time you hear about bandwidth because you hear about, so for example, your 4G network has a certain data rate, your ethernet for the networking has, you know, gives you however many megabits per second, or maybe your wireless networking gives you however many megabits per second. Maybe it's gigabits per second, depending upon the, the speed. That is a measure of bandwidth. That is a measure of if I throw a lot of data at you, how much data can you get through in one second? But there's another aspect of networking speed that also matters a lot, and that's called latency. And latency is a measure of when you go to request data or when you send out data, let's say you send a small amount of data, how long does it take to just initiate the contact? And so latency is kind of independent of, of bandwidth. If you're reading from a file, it turns out that disk drives can have rather high latencies. And so reading lots of small things, and remember our input stream, fundamentally reads one byte at a time. Reading one byte at a time from a disk is a very, very slow way to get things, even through networking. It's not an efficient way to do stuff. What a buffered input stream does is when you go to read one byte, it actually reads a big chunk of bytes. It reads a whole bunch of them all at once, but it only gives you one of them. And then the next time you go to read, it actually doesn't read at all. It just gives you the next thing that it had gotten. And it repeats that until it runs out of things in its buffer. And then as soon as it has emptied the buffer, then it will do another read from a large chunk of data. So basically by buffering, you make it so the latency is less important and it's the bandwidth that really matters. And a buffered output stream does a similar thing. So how would we make these things? Because our next code is gonna go inside of here, I'll just, I could make a buffered input stream. This would be a new buffered input stream and I would wrap it around a file input stream. Now, of course, that's not going to, to run because I don't have a file.txt inside of my, my package here. Um, save. But this shows you how you do decoration. So your innermost input stream or output stream has to actually attach to something, either that it's reading from or writing to. And then you can decorate it with other types that either, in this case, it really doesn't provide much functionality. It turns out there's a few other methods that you can get with the buffered input stream. But what really matters about the buffered input stream is it changes the way that the read method, that abstract read method on file input stream, it changes the way that read works so that it doesn't read single bytes at a time, it reads them in large chunks, which dramatically improves performance, especially from things like disk drives. The other type of, of thing that we can use for decorating is a something that changes the methods. And so something that we might want to do, so being able to read and write individual bytes is technically sufficient, but you really don't wanna do it. I mean, technically an int has four bytes inside of it, but I don't wanna to have to break apart my int manually and write out those four bytes. A double has eight bytes inside of it. Breaking those apart and writing them out, well, if you were to write it yourself is challenging. It turns out there are some library calls that will help you do that, but you don't need to because there are types called data input stream and data output stream. 
and data input stream has methods for reading a, an int or reading a double. And then the data output stream has methods for writing an int or writing a double. And these methods, when I call write int, it actually converts this integer to four bytes and then it writes those bytes out using whatever input stream it is wrapped around because it is also used as a decorator. And so if I wanted to write binary data to a file, I would actually make, or sorry, re, in this case, I'm using input. So if I wanted to read binary data from a file, I would wrap a data input stream around a buffered input stream around a file input stream. I have the buffer in the middle to improve my efficiency, and I have the data input stream here to really actually make it, uh, so I have methods for reading full ints and doubles. Now, of course, the stuff that I had written had to be uh, written out that way. So this kind of shows you how we can decorate streams. I wanna come back and I want to actually write some loan pattern methods in here that will allow us to use a data input stream and a data output stream, and then show you what that binary data looks like when it's raw binary data.